it's just a, a requirement to have good data as a starting point for anything that you want to do. And a funny thing that Gartner put out was a um, case study that said, I think it was in the, in the range of like 95% of a data scientist time is spent not doing any data science work at all. They spend the vast majority of their time just doing some foundational data wrangling, trying to get data into some usable state that they can even do something cool with it. Welcome to What Gets Measured, a NinjaCat podcast about marketing, performance management, metrics, and effectiveness. Because what gets measured gets managed. I'm your host, Jake Sanders. Paul Darivel is the CEO and co-founder of NinjaCat, a digital marketing performance management platform built for agencies, media companies, and brands. After working a few years in the agency world as a software developer, Paul shifted his focus to analytics in 2014, and since starting NinjaCat, He's been obsessed with building a product that helps clients prove the value of their work through better marketing data management, which is what brings him to the podcast today. Paul, how the heck are you? Hey, I'm terrific, Jake. It's hey. great to be here. Uh, you know, you, you always have a, there's always an open seat for you. So let's jump right in. What's, what's the current state of marketing data management? Uh, what, what, what do you think a critical area uh, here is for marketers to focus on? All right, we're going to talk data. Uh, all right, I guess we should start with, you know, what are the problems people are trying to solve with marketing data in the first place? Mm -hmm. So at least here at NinjaCat, right, what we see is we, we work with different types of customers that each have, you know, very similar but nuanced use cases, uh, or as we like to say, jobs that need to be done with that data. So for agencies and media companies, the use cases for data is they need to, you know, one, analyze that data so they can, you know, hopefully unearth uh, some useful insights that are going to help them make better decisions on behalf of their clients. Uh, the second use case we see is that they, you know, need to monitor data, just ensure that they're on track to hit client targets, whether this is budgets or KPIs, such as, uh, you know, ROAS. And then what NinjaCat is most well known for is, is the third use case, which is reporting on this data, right? And the agency media use case is more so about proving value to their existing clients uh, so that they have the highest uh, likelihood of reading, uh, re I'm sorry, retaining and uh, expanding with those clients. Mm. Uh, and then the fourth use case we've seen with this data is the job to be done is, is sharing that data. Um, oftentimes clients want to, at least large clients, want to run some of their own analysis or data science experiments. So they ask the agency, can you, we, we love the package data stories you provide us, but can you also uh, provide us the raw access to the campaigns you're running so we can do some of our own analysis? And then for brands, you know, the jobs to be done are, are very similar, just sometimes that reporting use case is more internal stakeholder versus uh, external, but still a very important job to be done. So. Those are, that's how we think about, you know, the data we're talking about, or I'm talking about at least today, the, the use cases um, of data. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the current state uh, of data management, I see a couple of different things, right? So it ranges from, you know, a large agency doing something so chaotic and messy. And I'm talking about some of the largest, you know, holding co-agencies out there. Absolute chaos. Uh, outsourcing to India, a team of people that are literally logging into platforms, manually pulling down metrics, putting them into spreadsheets, running some data transformation, Talon, DBT scripts, whatever it might be, to get this data, you know, aggregated uh, into a useful state. From there, then you know, building their own data warehouses, right, and, and building that whole data stack um, of you know at least the. Uh, the data warehousing, you know, whether it's GCP or Snowflake or SQL databases or whatever it might be. And then there's a complete reliance and dependence on these data engineers or data scientists or these outsource teams, right? So that's, that's actually far more present than you would believe um, out there today. There's a next evolution of that where it's not as manual um, and at least they're identifying some point solutions. There's lots of tools out there that are point solutions related to ETL like Fivetran or uh, Funnel or Supermetrics or Improvado. 
And these are point solutions that have a, a single job that they do, fetch data from a, a source and stick it into a destination, such as you know, <clears throat> uh, GCP or Snowflake. But that's just raw, dumb data in the data warehouse, right? Mm -hmm. So from there, then you still need somebody that's a data expert to come in and normalize all that data, aggregate it, and get it into a useful state, visualization-ready views or analysis-ready views um, of data. So it's still better than the first one. And then sometimes we even see people, I don't know why, but even coding their own integrations, which makes no sense given at least some of these point solutions are out there to you know, solve the ETL challenge. Interesting. So what's probably most prevalent by, by uh, what's going on out there is actually that, <clears throat> that second use case, what we like to call the Frankenstack, people cobbling together funnel plus five train plus super metrics for their data integration, then bringing in tools to do data transformation, such as talent or DVD scripts, then storing that data uh, inside a data warehouse, and then adding on the additional apps on top of that data to you know, analyze, um, monitor, or report on that data, whether it's Data Studio plus Tableau plus Looker, whatever it might be. So absolute chaos, we call it the Franken stack and there's just riddled with risk and complexity so that's what we see as as current state of data management and and so you so maybe just kind of jumping ahead into the lab into the lightning covered lab mm -hmm. um do you think the franken stack is is the most common barrier uh when you know agencies or brands are looking to scale their marketing data management it is yes it's that it's that it's just technical debt frankenstack mm -hmm. any other buzzwords we can fit in here no but speak <laughs> speak speak more to scalability i mean people want to go they want to go faster with their data they want to get more but they can't necessarily what's holding them back yeah yeah so the reality is you, you can build the frankenstack and it's popular because it can work right at a small at a small scale it can work sure um, but you know, as soon as you get into use cases of scale, and by the scale I'm talking about is, you know, you're an agency or a media company with hundreds or thousands of clients, they instantly, instantly break. They're unmaintainable, not designed for for scale or maintainability. So, you know, the challenges in a high scale use case, such as an agency or media company, you know, are far more complex than the single brand that's building a Franken stack. Right. Agencies and media companies have to think about things uh, related to scale, like. Uh, quota limits, right? We need to pull from trade desk analytics across hundreds or thousands of accounts and we try to use the tools. We need to set up hundreds or thousands of connectors for each, you know, five train super metro or fun ed. Then we're hitting, you know, quotas. That's one challenge, right? And then the next challenge that is very nuanced, but a huge challenge for agencies is, all right, we're pulling data at scale from these platforms, account matching. We need to make sure in our data warehouse, the right data is lined up to the right customers so that Coke doesn't see Pepsi's data. Right, not something to be overlooked. <laughs> is Big the, one. Uh, account matching uh, challenge there, and then you have what we like to call the common marketing data model. Right, you have to model this thing out, and in, in a agency or media company, you don't want to end up building, you know, different a one to one report for every single customer. Right, you want uh, one to many many reports and dashboards for this stuff. But in order to do that. You need centralized data that contains all clients that has proper account matching uh, in a model that is easy to get to you know, the visualization. And those challenges, as I said, you're just a brand, you can do it yourself, pull it off and you'll feel a little bit of pain. You're an agency, a media company or a publisher, that pain is significant. There's, it's very technical. Um it seems that if you really wanted to get insights out of data, you have to be very tactically and technically aware of this marketing data management. Uh -huh. So speak towards, towards the idea of, of all this data. If you can get all of these things humming in the right way, you know, hitting quota limits, making sure accounts are matched, you have your common marketing data model that, you know, creates templates that you can scale. How then do you get insights from this? I mean, because now, it, so, okay, good. I got, you know, 10,000, you know, 100,000 iterations of a report. Does this, yeah. does better management get you better insights? Oh, yeah. I mean, the principle there 
is it's essential garbage in garbage out right so mm-hmm. it's it's just a a requirement to have good data as a starting point for anything that you want to do and a funny thing that Gartner put out was a um, case study that said I think it was in the in the range of like ninety five percent of a data scientist time is spent not doing any data science work at all. They spend the vast majority of their time just doing some foundational data wrangling, trying to get data into some usable state that they can even do something cool with it. Some some AI ML predictive, you know, modeling stuff. It's like, no, that's not what data scientists actually spend their time doing. They get paid a fortune to just do this grunt work of wrangling data to get it into a usable state. So what I see here is like that's as the markets evolve, that's what people are really working on is their data strategy and just getting to a place of useful data sets that we can do something magical with. Mm -hmm. And everybody's been struggling just to get to this, you know, call it the ground level, get up from the basement, let's get on the ground level, right, of clean data that we can actually do some really cool things with analysis, exploration, predictive ML. uh, And that's, you know, self-promotion here um ninja cat you know, <laughs> Dang. So, solves those challenges of getting you you know instantly to data sets that are accurate so that you can do really cool stuff with. but it gets to that point these technical limitations you know ninja cat's a great platform but if you have these previous franken issues th- this magic key won't won't unlock certain things. I mean, I, I think maybe you're you're hinting at this point that if you don't do the data wrangling, that ninety five percent of what a data scientist does, you're never going to get to this place where you can, you know, even comprehend it. I mean, do 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 you see that people's previous Franken issues are um, also a barrier? Yeah, I mean, the hidden issues. There's lots of them. Um, you know, data inaccuracy is the first one. When you're cobbling multiple point solutions together, you have multiple points of failure. Where did the data go wrong? Was it in my ingestion pipeline? Was it in my transformation steps? You know, was it in this tool or this tool? One of the biggest challenges of a Franken stack when you're talking about data is data quality, right? So eliminate points of failure uh, is, is definitely one recommendation. Mm-hmm. Um, then there is other things, right? Just other risk beyond bad data is, I won't mention them by name, but a, a very big well-known agency that had a well-known data breach that came to us and said, you know, our team literally had to shut down our data warehouse, something they built internally, and we need your help because they're focused on things and it may be weeks or months before we get, we can access thing, access this thing again, right? So that's one crazy horrific story we saw. Other scenarios we've had is people building these data teams and building these proprietary data stacks and like the DBA who knew all the data models, right? Of like what data was actually coming from where and what was it named, the whole governance around it, you know, got another job without can everyone notice. And then nobody knew what the hell the data meant, the definition, like where is the source of truth for this data? What does this metric mean? Because that was with a single person I cobble this together, and that's just an absolute nightmare, as you can imagine as well. So, a Frankenstack is riddled with risk and complexity. It's what it comes down to. That's amazing. I, I didn't. You don't ever really think about the people aspect of all of this because we are so process oriented sometimes. So, you gave us a couple horror stories there. Do you have like a Cinderella story, something transformational, a, a, a moment where marketing data management? was clicking for a client and you just saw, you know, everybody go off to the ball? (laughs) I don't think, I mean, the, the nightmare scenario I explained to you, that's, that's a Cinderella story of Ninja Guy coming in to save the day (laughs) and showing there's a better way. You don't have to, the thing you spent years building, we could just go point to a couple of different integrations, pull these things into a common marketing data model and you're back up and running. So I'd call that a, it's a, a fairy, it's a fairy godmother kind of <laughs> angle too. But but what I'm really excited about, I think, yeah, really as I, I see the market unfolding here is there's all been this this hype and talk about AI and ML and in the marketing world. And honestly, I think the vast majority of it has been exactly that hype because 
but 95% of data scientists time is not actually doing this cool stuff. So when they can focus on the meaningful instead of the monotonous, right? And that's where the world is, is evolving. What will happen when that intelligent data scientist can really focus on doing these advanced models, prediction type stuff, like expecting really cool things to actually happen. I believe in the promise and I believe the barrier was just getting to good fuel, which is good data. So let's let's get um, let's put put ourselves in this uh, scenario, a hypothetical. You're just going to be giving quippy advice. So imagine you're in a bowling alley with some friends, and you hear a marketer in the next lane, and they're talking. They're struggling with marketing data management. What's your advice to them? Your your quick back of the napkin kind of advice. Uh, so I'm in a bowling alley with some friends. Um, you can be wearing whatever kind of shoes. You can have wings. I hear them talking about, I'd say, why are you talking about data management at a bowling alley? Okay. Fair. <laughs> That's fair. Hey, enjoy the game, my friends. Stop, stop letting the burden of data management follow you to the bowling alley. I think now, now you're taking it too don't. literal. I think you're actually there. And God bless you for giving the right advice. Be like, geez, just really focus. Yeah. I'd say, hey, friend, have you thought about simplifying things? Consider an all-in-one solution such as Ninja Cat. Help you with all your wrangling needs. Perfect. A slap, a little business card in the hand. Boo. <laughs> That's what I did. That's exactly what I did. Uh, no, I love it. I think a, somewhere in between the first answer and the second answer is where is where the truth lies. Uh, so this has been great. Thank you so much for uh, sitting down and sharing your perspective and expertise on this important topic. And if people want to learn more and they want to chop it up with you, how can they connect with you online, Paul? So I'm actually an introvert and, and doing things on social. Uh, just me anxiety so um you can find you on twitter and then ask ask for my phone number um or you could just email me i'm, I'm happy to chat with people uh one-on-one -on -one. um my email is paul at ninja cat that i own seriously I, I love talking about this and any anyone out there listening that believes i could be helpful or could share some stories uh happy to do so yes i have a bios uh t towards ninja cat and our solutions but at the end of the day every tool has its strengths and weaknesses the franken stack does work and is the right solution for some but i could say with certainty you know if you're an agency a media company you're dealing with the scale challenge uh we've learned lots of lessons there and uh have helped so many um nail this data management and reporting uh challenge so we'd love to chat Cheese or chocolate? Are you ready? Uh-huh. Cheese or chocolate? <laughs> uh, chocolate. Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, look, well, if, if you're only giving the option of cheese or chocolate, when I thought cheese, I thought about how much I love cheese on pretzel crisps. Yes. But if it's independent, just cheese, a pe you're going to hand me a piece of cheese or a piece of chocolate. I'll go with the chocolate. Totally. I think you're right. There, pretzels could be involved in both of those. So now we're kind of crossing the, the streams. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. Continue. Uh, ability to fly or breathe underwater? Oh, fly without a doubt. You know, a little fly claustrophobic a down there. Uh, plus, you need a, a headlight. Um, Stevie Nicks or Stevie Wonder? Oh, I love Stevie Nicks. They're both great, but just... Sleeping next voice. Something special there. There's a landslide there. Uh, <laughs> she won by a landslide. Uh, Bach or Beethoven? Uh, I guess Beethoven. I don't have a strong opinion, to be honest. You don't, yeah, they both wear wigs. It's weird. Uh, Billie Eilish or Billy Joel? <laughs> Do you know? Do you know the, the Billy Joel fun fact about me? Do I? I, now, now I do. Now we will. No, seriously, you don't know? No, let's go. <laughs> Billy Joel, literally, I could see Billy Joel's house from my street. No way. No the right yeah. now? Well, if I walk out of my house and I make a left and I go down about 50 yards to the street, 
He lives uh, across the water on an island called Center Island on a little rich island, but you can literally see his house uh, from, from where I live. And he actually takes a helicopter to Madison Square Garden and his neighbors absolutely hate him and complain about <laughs> helicopter noise. And my recommendation is he's probably making millions. On the way back, he should just drop some money out of the helicopter on his neighbors each day. Like, hey, you go. Here's some money. <laughs> and I'll solve that problem. But yeah, I'm surprised. Great question, uh, especially if you didn't know that. But yeah, Billy Joel is a semi-close neighbor to me. And uh, he's an absolute Long Island legend. So um, totally. Yeah, Billy Joel. So and once he does those money drops, let us know because we can drive out there and just open the sunroof and see what we catch okay last question ninja cats or ninja puppies i'm being honest cats are okay <gasps> i always had a cat and grew up with a cat <gasps> but if you give me a choice do i get 10 cats or 10 puppies I'm definitely going 10 puppies there's a whole vibe with that whole vibe with the whole vibe with 10 cats 10 puppies you're like some 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 you could be santa claus you know there's a vibe there's an, there's an identity and i'm not sure a cohort <laughs> what gets measured is a ninja cat podcast please rate and review the show wherever you find your podcasts Share this episode on social, and visit us on the web at ninjacat.io.